Hello and welcome back to the Rock Code Academy. I'm your host, David Flanagan. Today we're taking a look at Dagger.io. Dagger is a tool for building CI/CD pipelines. Go check out Dagger.io to learn more. And of course, keep watching this video. I'm going to show you how to use Dagger in a mono repository context with secrets, composable builds that you can run anywhere, including localhost. As we see here on the Dagger website, you can run your Dagger pipelines anywhere. Why? Well, because they're just orchestrated containers. So as long as you can run a container on your local machine, in GitHub Actions, Circle CI, or even in production or on a Kubernetes cluster, you can run your Dagger pipelines. One of the main selling points or what makes Dagger unique is that Dagger pipelines don't require you to write any YAML. You can define your Dagger pipelines as code. Today, we will be using Go, but you can also use Python, JavaScript, TypeScript, and realistically, any programming language. While these are the main ones supported by Dagger, as we can see on the homepage here, GraphQL is what makes all of this work. So provided you can take a GraphQL schema, you could probably generate some sort of SDK, or you could just write GraphQL and use your favorite programming language to execute it. That's up to you. And maybe something we'll play around with on another video. But today we're gonna to focus on Go, where I'm gonna show you how to build your classic three-tier application. A backend service written in Go, a front-end service running in JavaScript, a database, which could be either SQLite or Postgres, and consumption of secrets. So let's dive in. All right, so before we go into the code, before I show you Dagger, let's see what our local dev experience looks like without Dagger. Now it's pretty good and local dev experiences usually are. However, they're not repeatable in other machines and other infrastructure and especially not in production. So I can go into the backend service where I can do go run main.go. That's a pretty hard dev experience to beat because we're using native tooling on a native machine and Go makes it pretty easy. We can then jump down here where we do a curl to localhost on 8080, where we can hit the ping endpoint and we get Pong back. This API also has an ask endpoint where we can provide a post request. With curl, that means just providing a JSON body or any body, where we can provide a JSON request, where we pass in a question. The question could be translate hello from English to German and hit return. Now we get an error and that's because we need a secret value. However, I've got that covered. Inside my top level directory, I have an ENVRC. Inside of this, I have the OpenAI token. However, I have it set to this funny looking string. This funny looking string is a one password secret reference. Now I can use this here because I have one password on my machine. Whatever your secrets management is, use that. One password is a good choice. You can run the operator in production and still consume secrets in the exact same way. Other notable options are Doppler from Doppler.com. So that's up to you. Locally, I can do OP run, go run main, where it will pop up on my watch and approve the request. And if I run our command again, we get the answer. Hello in Deutsch is hello. So now we have a pretty good dev experience. We can now go into our front end application where we do a PMPM run dev. I can pop this open in my browser where I get my wonderful developer focused UI, which just means black text on a white background, where I can ask questions of Dagger AI. So let's see if we can translate hello to Polish. And voila, I'm going to trust ChatGPT. So that's pretty good, but we're having to manage the back end, run the front end, and we're consuming secrets in a pretty good way, but still a little bit too much work. There's one other thing we haven't done yet, and that is run our test suite. So we're going to come out of the front end where we go into build test. Here I have a tests.hurl file. If you're not familiar with Huddle, go to huddle.dev. That is H U R L dot dev. Gives you a text based format to describe HTTP requests where you can build assertions against their response. Here I do a get on backend 8080 ping where I expect a 200. I also do a post to backend 8080 ask, sending in my JSON payload with a question and asserting that I get the German word for hello back in response. We can now do hurl, test.hurl. And we see that it fails. 
because we need to speak to something called backend. Now, I could use localhost here, but that's not going to work repeatably in other machines and other environments. So for this, I have created a just target where we can run just test and our tests pass. If we take a look at our just file, we're using a nifty feature of hurl where we can pass dash dash connect to where we swap out the backend 8080 tuple for localhost 8080 tuple. This is a decent developer environment at the moment. We have a just file to handle the edge case where we can run the tests in a, where there could be a container based environment. But we want to pull more automation into this. We want to be able to run it anywhere. And we want to be able to expand on this. If you started down a service oriented architecture or you're using a mono repository, it doesn't stop at three services or two services. It's potentially going to grow. And using composition of our CICD system, being able to reference other modules and actions and chain them together is going to be paramount to your success. So let's see how we can take this three tier application, automate it with Dagger, with a pipeline we can run anywhere that's extensible, cacheable, and performant. So let's take a look at some code. Let's go through the back end first. This is a very simple Go application using the Gen web framework. As you can see here, we rely on an environment variable called openai underscore token. This is how we provide that secret to the backend to speak to the chat GPT service. There's one other environment detail that is required for this application to work. When it's emitted, it's going to use an in-memory SQLite database. Great for dev, but doesn't resemble production. So we want to be able to provide this database URI with the same production environment that we use when we run our CI system. For today's example, we're going to use Postgres. I'm also a big believer that when you write code, the code that you use to orchestrate it, manage it, build it, and run it should live right next to it. We shouldn't be shipping this stuff away to another repository or another directory. It just doesn't make sense. So you'll see here, I have a build directory with a build.go. This contains the dagger code and function that are specific to this individual service. As you'll see here, we pull in the dagger API or the dagger SDK, and we expose two functions. One called build container image, which is consumed by the export container image. If you've been writing code for one year, five years, 10 years, 20 years or longer, you've accumulated experience. You've learned how to write more code in a better fashion. Why do we throw this away when it comes to CICD when we just write YAML? Let's take all of that experience and build composable, extensible, maintainable build pipelines. Now this is a contrived example right now. I'm consuming a function from another function that still is just the tip of the iceberg. So our export container function calls build and then publishes it to GHCR. And that's it. Our build function, because this is just Go code, can use just Go code. We can just use format.print to stick something into the console or our logs. It's just that simple. Now, because this is a mono repository, you're going to see some funny little bits of lines of code here where I use runtime caller to get the current directory of this specific source file so that I can pluck out small parts of the mono repository to consume them in other parts of the system. I'm going to skip over it for now, but if you want to learn more, ask questions, or just find the code, the links are in the show notes below. Once we have the source directory for this individual service, we can use the Dagger client to get a container. We're going to start with Golang Latest, where we mount our source directory to slash source. We set the working directory to slash source. And look, we run a Go build, and that's it. Now, this could be done with a Docker file, sure. And can Dagger use a Docker file? Yes, it can. However, when we do it as code, it just becomes a little bit more maintainable and composable. We can reuse these step definitions. I can actually stop here, assign this to a variable like build output, and then do something else with it multiple times. Where maybe I run go build here for one architecture, but then run it again for a different. Now I'm not gonna cover multi-architecture right now because Dagger covered that really well in their documentation. So remember, dagger.io, check out the docs, check out the cookbooks and the guides. Now, we all know that multi-stage builds are how we should be shipping things to production. We don't want to ship the entire Golang toolchain to a production image. So let's get a new container from Ubuntu 22, where we grab a file from the previous build. 
you can see here we're seeing web fail store the slash entry point and what we're going to store there well is the output or the fail output from another build notably our build output where the file is slash source slash backend which is the file we built we can then set the entry point and wipe out the default args this is now an image that we can publish as we do with the export container image function voila there's no other dagger code here other than these two helper functions next to the back end. That's just for today's example and not necessarily something you would do in a real application. But we'll cover that in another video. So for today's example, all of the code or the build pipeline that we're going to work with lives inside the build directory. If we open our test package, we have a main.go. This just means that I can run main.go here to test the service-oriented architecture, which I'm pushing with that definition, this three-tier application with a single endpoint. Consider this like an acceptance test. Okay, so the first thing we have in here is our main function. This just allows us to run go run on this file and run the entire test harness. That is just handing off to a build function, which creates a dagger client. Now, we know that our backend service has a few inputs that are required for it to run successfully. Notably, it needs an open AI token so that it can speak to the chat GPT API. Here, we have a dev secret. This is a helper function that I provide in a dev tool library that can be used anywhere in our Dagger pipelines. It takes a secret reference, which is a string, and returns a string or an error, the error being if the secret reference could not be resolved. It's important to note that we do not pass the dagger client into this function. Why is that important? I'll get to in just a moment. So let's pop in and take a look at get secret. It takes a string and returns a string. We can see that it's actually just executing a command on my host. That's why it's important that there's no dagger client. Why is that even more important when it refers to secrets? Because we execute this command on the host as me. I am ambiently authenticated as me to speak to one password. In fact, when the OP read hits my host, you've seen that it popped up on my watch for me to approve. It's important that this is not happening in a container context because the minute it does, we have that potential that our container or CI cache could have sensitive information. And we want to minimize that risk whenever possible. So our get secret speaks to one password on the host returns a string. So of course, once we have this string here and assuming there's no error, the first thing we want to do is to sanitize this in a way that we can use it in our container context without it being leaked into the build cache or even out in the logs. So you'll see here that we call client, a dagger client dot set secret, where we say that we want to name this secret open AI token. And the value is our value from one password. This now means that we have enough guarantees that this will not end up in our logs and we'll do a demo to prove that before the end of this video. Next, we call devtool.getdatabase. This is a function that is going to return our production-like configured Postgres instance so that we're not using SQLite in our test harness. Again, trying to minimize the variance between production and test. That get database looks like this. This does take a dagger client. So we know there's a container involved. And in fact, we get a container. We start with Postgres 15 as a base. We set the environment variables that we know need to exist in order for this container to run healthily, which is the user, the password, and a database name. And because we're going to use this in our dagger context, we're just going to say that this exposes port 5432 so that when we run this as a dependent service, the networking will work. Now, it's important to know that this is code, right? Dagger pipelines are code, which means we can do code-like things. It may be that you don't always want Postgres 15. It may be that you don't always want to just support Postgres. Perhaps as an organization, you're starting to test MySQL, CockroachDB, MongoDB, your tool chain, you decide. But you still want to provide helpers that allow people to test their applications with good velocity. So. Obviously, the simple approach would be just to say, you know, get 14, uh, and then we have a variant, right? But there's a lot of shared code between this. And again, because we're using code for our pipelines, we can do code-like things. 
So instead of just duplicating the code, why don't we do struct config db version is string. Now I could have called that Postgres version and I was about to, but we could prepare for the future. We may support multiple drivers at one point. We can then say that this 14 is actually get database with a config where we have a config. That now means that this Postgres can become a formatted string like so. And we're formatting this with config.db version. And then we save that to resolve the format import. Now we still have a lot of duplication. And again, you've got experience of writing code. I've got experience with writing code. We have patterns that we use for composition. We have patterns that we use for maintainable code. Those all apply to your Dagger pipelines. But we still have a lot of duplication. So what we can actually do is remove that and just say that actually we're just going to call get database of config with a default config where that database version is 15. Now this is backwards compatible, it's maintainable and it's extensible. We can now modify and expand our config, making sure the default case is always what was the default case, but have a function that can return whatever we need. And that is pretty cool. So now that we have our database, we can start to build up the services that we need to run our test harness. You can see here that we're pulling in something called backend builder build container image. And if you remember looking at the dagger code for each service, the backend service, it had a function called build container image, which we're now using. We're then enriching it with a database URI. And we're setting this to Postgres, 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 database 5432, Postgres. We're just setting it up based on the information that we have from here. Now this could get smarter yet. Again, it's code and you can do code like things. What if the return type here was actually a database credentials, which had a host, a username, a password, and a port. We can now start to consume all of these details here and remove the hard coded strings. Now I'm not going to do all of this today, but hopefully I'm showing you that again, dagger, code, maintainability, extensibility, and composability all give you a lot of power to treat your dagger pipelines like real software projects, improve them, maintain them, and make them faster. Once we've configured the database UI, we pass in our open AI token. Now, because this is a secret, we're passing this in as web secret variable. Why are we doing this? Because we never want this to leak. I'm feeling bold enough that I'm going to go to our backend service and paste in a printf that prints our token to the log output. Now, because we mount this into the container as a secret reference, it should be redacted in the log output. We then say that the port is 8080 and we expose this port to be consumed by the test harness container. And of course, our backend has a dependent service. So we're going to do web service binding under the DNS hostname database to the database container. We're just connecting these two together so that our backend can make requests over the DNS name database to the Postgres instance. And then we set a web exec as empty, which just means trigger that entry point that we configured in our production image. Now I am using a little bit of runtime caller just to get, again, a specific subset of our mono repository. In this case, I'm grabbing the test.hurl directory or the directory that contains the test.hurl and I'm mounting it into a container which is using the hurl 3.0 image. This has a backend, this has a dependent service too. The hurl test suite needs to be able to speak to the backend over the DNS name backend. We've seen this in the hurl file itself and the workaround and the just file for local execution. We mount the directory, we set the entry point, and we pass uh, exec, which is the command in the Docker file or the arguments to the entry point. Now, because these can pass or fail, we grab the exit code and we grab standard air. I could grab standard out, but I don't need it in this particular instance. If the exit code is not zero, this means that a failure happened, a failure occurred. So let's print out a red goblin or devil, whatever that is. <laughs> With test fails, we'll print the exit code and we'll print the error output. And if things worked successfully, green tick and passed. So we're going to run this again. What we expect to see is a redacted secret inside of our log output and our tests passing using two dependent services powered 
by Dagger. Now, because this is Go code, I can, and we will in a moment, run the test may not go as a straight up file. However, the only feedback you're going to get from Dagger is the format.print lines that you do, unless you configure the debug output on the Dagger connection. However, there's an experimental UI, which you may remember I set inside the ENVRC. To use that experimental UI, we can do dagger run, go run, build, test, main. When I run this, we're going to see the complete graph of all the steps that dagger is going to run and whether they're successful, whether they're in progress or whether they have failed. So the UI should pop up and right away, because one of the first things that we do is a host call to get my password. We can actually see the only step in the DAG right now is the go run. There are no container executions at all. So let's approve that. And now we're pulling Golang Latest and Postgres. A lot of this will be cached because I've run this demo many, many times. However, we did make a modification to the Go binary, which may trigger the build. So we're going to give that just a few seconds to finish. Okay, so our test suite has now finished. If we go to the very top, we'll see that the build has passed. But what we're interested in seeing is the redacted secret in the dependent service output. So let's scroll down to the dependent service where we have the entry point here. And as you'll see, we have our output of API token is here where it's just replaced with three stars. Sweet. Now the Dagger UI is great. You can use that as much as you want. It's great for debugging observability into what is actually happening now with part of the pipeline. But of course, because this is all just Go code, we can also just do Go run build test, where build test is the module name of where my test runner is and the main.go. I run this like this. When it finishes, all we're going to see is any print statements that I have, such as build a container image. And the last print statement will either be test pass or test fail. And our test pass. Of course, never trust a test suite that passes twice in a row, especially mine. Let's come into our test.hurl. Now, I'm not going to change any Go code. Our cache within the build system should still be pretty good, meaning even if I change the test suite, it should run against the cached and built artifacts, meaning it should be really fast. So I'm pretty sure chat GPD is not going to say raw code in response to our question. So let's run this one more time and see the tests fail. And in nine seconds, as opposed to over a minute, we see that we do not get raw code as part of our response. Nice. So that's it for this video. Hopefully you have a good taste for the things you can do with Dagger now. The key takeaways are, one, Dagger is awesome. You can write complete CICD pipelines in whatever programming language you want. Take an advantage of all the years of experience you have of writing code and applying them to your build system. We can pull in secrets. We can have dependent services. We can have a CI system that is truly composable. And that is worth its weight in gold. So go check out Dagger now. Remember to check out dagger.io for all the latest news and announcements, as well as some great documentation. We'll see you next time. Have a great day.